Hi, I'm Dr. Blanche Gruby, and I'm having an informal discussion here with Dr. Derek Grieco, who is one of the newest members of our Centers for Healing. Dr. Grieco is a dentist and has been a dentist for quite a few years. I'm not calling you an old man, okay? Okay. Uh, but you, you are very experienced. Yes. So you haven't always been a holistic biological dentist. No, I haven't. That's, that's a, been, a, been quite a journey. I okay. I started probably about 10 years ago. About 10 journey. years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how did yeah. that happen? So, well, I started my practice in 1993. Okay. And... Um, oh, I was only 12 back then. You were only 12? Yeah. Now. I was just getting yeah. out of school and was blessed to come into a practice, very busy. And uh, shortly after that, through cosmetic dentistry, I stopped placing silver mercury fillings. Oh, okay. However, there's a difference between being, you know, mercury free and mercury safe. That's correct. So, around 2002, 2003, I had a chiropractic friend come to me, uh -huh. and he wanted to have his silver fillings replaced. Well. I just picked the two biggest ones that he had in his mouth, and lo and behold, he ended up being sick. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> well, you Sorry. had a chiropractic friend yes. who said, gee, would you replace my mercury fillings, and you just went at it? I just went at it. And now, there is a big difference between being mercury-free and mercury-safe. I don't know if you caught that when exactly. he first said that. There is a big difference. There are many, many dentists now that call themselves mercury free. As a matter of fact, a recent survey by the American Dental Association said that 54% of American dentists are no longer putting in mercury amalgam fillings. So they would be classified as mercury free dentists. Right. 54%. That doesn't mean they're mercury safe dentists. They just might go right ahead and start drilling on a silver mercury filling with absolutely no protection for the patient and absolutely no protection for themselves. So what I'm hearing from you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Rico, for the first time, no kidding. I mean, yeah, I know you. I, 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 this is coming as quite a shock to You might want to me. rethink your relationship <laughs> with me. <laughs> so what I'm so, hearing now is that you just went ahead and, and took did. his fillings out. I, I and did. tell us what happened. Well, shortly after, he had called me and said, hey, you know, a couple of days after, he was an avid actually a competitive cyclist okay and he went through a vigorous workout and he says I I could hardly do half of my workout today and I said well maybe you were allergic to the anesthetic I used or something oh, okay. so lo and behold I had him come in two weeks later we did two on the other side <laughs> and I used a different anesthetic thinking oh, maybe it was something with the anesthetic in boxing they call that the one two <sighs> punch well yeah. we did that and same thing happened to him but he bounced he recovered um, was mm. able to, you know, go back to work. But shortly after that, he started to get fatigued at work and irritable. Right. And for about a year, he slowly declined wow. to the point where he had suicidal thoughts. He thought he was going to harm his family. And his profession, his professional life really mm. declined. And he was at a course down in Washington, D.C., Washington, a chiropractic course. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, a colleague came up to him and explained to him, his, to his colleague what he was going through and his colleague mm -hmm. said to him you might want to get checked for mental toxicity right so there was a practitioner back in our hometown of Pittsburgh my hometown of Pittsburgh and uh, a holistic pract uh, practitioner that was trained by Dr. Huggins okay who, good who has since then been has since then retired went to him and had his revision done and he came back Thank God he was loved me enough to come back to me and say, right. Hey, Derek, you need to go and look at this protocol and learn how to do this. Ah. And that's, that's, that began my journey. So he had the so, rest of his fillings removed but had it done using by, the, the Huggins protocol. By a practitioner in, uh, in Pittsburgh, mm. yes. Okay. So that's how that, and that began my journey to, to start looking into this. Interesting. Wow. But I was paralyzed for a year because I didn't want to touch anybody because right. you didn't want to I didn't hurt know anybody. how to I didn't know how to do it. Right. Right. The correct way. Right. So. Well, yeah, when I first discovered that mercury was toxic, I knew I never wanted to put another filling in, but I was paralyzed because I didn't know how to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they never taught us in dental school. Mm, right, never, right. They never taught us how to put composite fillings in back teeth. So I was, I mm. was stuck. I was just like, well, I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't. I can't put in mercury fillings, but I don't know how to put in composite fillings. So I did nothing. <laughs> yeah, and they're so much more difficult. You're right. Yeah, I did nothing. I closed much... my practice. That, that was it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so. so that's very interesting. So that's how you got interested. So that's how I got interested. And I attended my first meeting huh? down in Florida. And I believe I met you there, but it was a real quick, you were giving some, you were giving a lecture. Right. And then I attended the Huggins, the Huggins Alliance training uh, in, in Colorado, Colorado Springs. Springs. Okay. And that's where we had met, got, went okay. out to dinner with my team and you were so gracious and you even taught part of the course. Right. So right. actually most of the course. Because right, most you know, of the course. Now Howell, I'm teaching all of the course. <laughs> that's right. Because Hal would get off on his, on his tangents. Having to try to rein him back in. And, but uh, what, a, what a blessing, what, a, what an experience. And so that's... It is, it's, it's life changing, isn't it? Totally. Totally, totally life changing. Totally life changing. And, and when you realize that you can't be doing dentistry the old way, it's a 180 degree paradigm shift. Exactly, yes. And what I don't understand is why there are dentists out there, the other 46%, that are still putting in mercury fillings <clears throat> with all the talk on radio, on TV, in the newspaper. Everybody's talking about mercury in fish, mercury in the oceans, mercury in dentistry. I, I don't understand why there's some dentists that are still putting in mercury fillings. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it either. Yeah, so just, it just amazes me. It, it is amazing. Anyway, so, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about the difference between a dentist who is mercury safe and a dentist who is mercury free. Right, Be because there are people who ask us, well, what separates you from all the other dentists that are mercury free? Yeah, so you know? one of the things we talked about was just the scheduling. You know, tell me, you know. That's how, right. You know, well, that's, that's the scheduling one of the, aspect that we talked about. Yeah, one of, the, uh, one of the rules of the Huggins Protocol. And by the way, when, you know, when we talk about the Huggins Protocol, people ask me very often, how, how did this come about? How is it that there is a Huggins Protocol? Well, Dr. Huggins was one of the first dentists in the United States who learned about the mercury toxicity issue and decided he was no longer going to put fillings in. And early in his early days, he thought, well, he was just simply going to take fillings out. And then mm. he began to notice that some patients got better after he took the fillings out. And then some patients, like the fellow that you took two fillings out on, some patients did not get better. As a matter of fact, they got, they got very ill afterwards. And he, Dr. Huggins was, is, a, is a sharp enough scientist to make note of every single procedure that he did. And then he began to actually look and see, well, let's see what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. work. What did I do differently for Mrs. Smith that I didn't do for Mrs. Jones? And what's the difference? And if I did exactly the same thing for Mrs. Smith and for Mrs. Jones, how are they different? So he took the time to look at all of these. So when I, when I met Dr. Huggins in 1992, it didn't take long for me to realize that he had already treated thousands of patients and had already figured out what worked and what didn't. And I thought, well, okay, I'm now 42 years old at that point. I'm 42 years old. I've been practicing for 10 years. Why at that point would I want to reinvent the wheel and start my own system of proper amalgam mm -hmm. removal? And I thought it would be a very smart thing for me just to follow him. And so I made, it was probably one of the smartest decisions yeah, I made in my absolutely. life, was yeah. to follow Dr. Huggins very closely and, and do what he did and try to understand why he did mm -hmm. what he did. And so very often people will ask me, well, why do you do it that way? Well, years ago, I didn't know why. I did it that way because that's the way Dr. Huggins did it. Right. And, and it wasn't until years later that I continued studying alternative medicine and continued studying the uh, other modalities like acupuncture and, and acupressure mm -hmm. and, and uh, iridology and all the other herbology and homeopathy that I began to have a better understanding of how energy flows in the body and how to understand why he did the things he did. So, so for instance, one of the things that, that is part of the Huggins Protocol, what we call the Huggins Protocol, and is very important, is scheduling. 
Now, right. when I was a dental assistant, this is back, you know, 19, 20 years old. As a dental assistant, most people went to the dental office on their day off. And if their day off happened to be a Wednesday, they went every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure when you first started practicing, didn't you have patients who came to you on their day yes. off? Yeah, that's true. Right? They yeah. came all yeah, the time true. on yes. their day off. Right. Well, what Dr. Huggins learned years ago was that the immune system is on a seven-day cycle. With all the training I had, nobody ever mentioned to me in my training, and I was trained at a very fine medical dental school, nobody ever mentioned that the white blood cell lives seven days. Mm -hmm. That's it. They're born, <laughs> they're mm -hmm. educated, they work for a few days, and then they're done. It's amazing. So the white blood cell is on a seven-day cycle. So your Monday white blood cells are born Monday morning. They live seven days, and by Sunday night, they're on their way out. And so and then a new fresh batch of Monday white blood cells are born. And then your Tuesday white blood cells, they're a little different than their Monday white blood mm -hmm. cells because they were born on Tuesday. Kind of like that song, Tuesday's Child or Monday's Child. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so your white blood cells are on a seven-day cycle. So there has to be some connection between that and why biblically God said, and on the seventh day you will rest. Because it takes that long for us to rejuvenate our whole immune system. It's the, you know, the Sabbath was made for us, not, not the opposite mm -hmm. way, the right. opposite way. Right. A lot of people get confused yeah. about that. The Sabbath is a gift for us to rest on that day. Whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Friday night, whatever. But you just put, pick one day and, and just rest. So the same way with our immune system. So if you continue to see a patient on the same day every week, <clears throat> and that happens to be a Wednesday, eventually what's going to happen is their Wednesday white blood cells are going to be at an all-time low from their whole life. At an all-time low. So you never want to schedule a patient on the same day of the week over and over again. And, and if a patient does get a Wednesday appointment in, in the Huggins Protocol and in our office and in all of the centers for healing, that patient will never get another Wednesday for at least 28 days for a full month. We like to allow their Wednesday white blood cells to build up so that they're nice and strong for the next time something happens and they need that extra strength. So that's one of the things that we follow in the Centers for Healing, which are all Centers for Healing, by the way, all Centers for Healing are dedicated to the Huggins Protocol, which means it doesn't matter if you're going to Centers for Healing in California, Centers for Healing in Scranton, Centers for Healing in Pittsburgh, Centers for Healing in Austin, Texas, all of them will be dedicated to following the Huggins Protocol because our number one rule is to first do no harm. Right. So unless a patient is sedated, and we'll get into a whole conversation about the whole sedation thing, unless a patient is sedated, if they're fully awake, they may not have the same day appointment twice in a row. Yeah, and this, that brings up the point about the charges. If they're not going to be sedated, and we have to do mm -hmm. sectional right. dentistry, the charges are very important. Very important, very, important. very different. Right. You mean so electrical charges. Electrical you don't mean how much money we're going to charge them. Well, that's... <laughs> okay. That's I'm good. sorry I didn't stick... <laughs> electrical specify charges. That, right. Yeah. So another, that's a, that brings up another rule of the, the Huggins Protocol, is that you have to find out what the electrical charges are on the teeth. And when you take the fillings out, you don't just go in there haphazardly like, like you did yes. on this one fellow and, yeah, yeah. and how I probably would have done on many people had I not been trained. You don't go in there haphazardly. You go to the filling with the highest negative charge. Now, Dr. Huggins took a lot of flack and a lot of criticism because his fellow colleagues said there was no scientific evidence for taking out the filling <clears throat> with the highest negative charge first. Mm -hmm. I said... There is no such proof. Show, show me. It doesn't exist. And well, years later, he found out there was proof. There is scientific proof. It's, it's actually basic physiology that shows that if a tooth has a high negative electric charge, then the 
polar end of that tooth, the opposite end of it, has a positive charge leaving it. And positive charges have a totally different reaction on the brain and the hormonal system of the body than negative charges do. And so it really is very important when taking fillings out that the filling with the highest negative charge comes out first unless the patient is sedated. Right. Okay, so that's, that's another thing that we follow in Centers for Healing. And it's important that patients understand that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you're a mercury-free dentist, I'm a mercury-free dentist, but then there are many other mercury-free dentists. So what separates us? That we follow the Huggins Protocol and that makes us also a mercury-safe office. A place where a patient can have a filling replaced, have dentistry done, and know that they're not going to receive harm in right, the process. Right, right. Really important. Um, so, Dr. Derek, I'm never quite sure whether to call you Dr. Derek, Dr. Greco. You know, once when we're, we're having a busy day in our office, my husband is Dr. John Gruby, and I'm Dr. Blanche Gruby, so it's much easier to just call us Dr. John and Dr. Blanche. And so we kind of got into the habit of calling each other's by our first, first name. names. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. David Villarreal joined us, so we call him Dr. David. So if you don't mind, I'm going to call Dr. you Dr. Derek sometimes. That's, that's fine. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. Um, so, Dr. Derrick, you were a conventional dentist then for many years. Yes. And then you became a biological dentist. Yes. So tell me some of the other uh, modalities and other treatment things that you've learned along the way and things that you really like doing in dentistry. Well, the, the thing that I'm learning right now, which is really, really interesting, is blood chemistries. Ah, I mean, yeah. that is... Amazing. That is amazing, the blood chemistries. And, you know, I have most of our patients... In my office, they'll get the assist report from right. Doctor from, from Doctor Hoggins's the the Alliance, um, and that comes back in a it's like very a Bible. It's, it's like a Bible this about yeah. this patient. So that's been a real interesting facet. The other thing is that's been interesting is um, the new materials that we're right. able to work with that are we're trying to become aluminum free and BPA free and Right. You know, try to be, get some the ultimate pure materials that we can ultimately use. In our, it's not what God gave them, but right. we want to get something that's that is compatible as we can for them. And um, if you if you think about it, thirty years ago we couldn't be as vehement about removing com amalgams and removing mercury because we didn't have good materials to put in right. the patient's mouth. That I mean, were that were stable. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, you know, Thirty years ago, we didn't you, have anywhere near what we have today. You saw a patient today. I guess, I, I think you did the revision last yeah, year. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And it, they look brand. They looked like they were replaced last yep, week. Yep, brand new. Yeah, brand I went new. over after you said that. I went over and looked. And yeah. you were with that patient on the yeah. recall, and that yeah. was those composites look like they were put in yesterday. Yeah. So the materials are. Yeah. Really now, when, are, when I first started as a dental assistant, we used to mix silicates. I used to watch the dentist mix a silicate on a glass slab, and it was kind of sticky. Mm -hmm. And then they would carry this over and try to stick it in the front teeth. It was just a totally different ball game compared to what we're doing now with composites. Wow. wow. Yeah, so, so, so everything has fit in together. The, really, the, the, the fact that we have the better materials now is helping us to be really dogmatic Mm -hmm. I hate to use that word, you know, in dentistry, but it's true. We can be dogmatic about the fact that there are safe materials that are just as good, if not yeah. better, yes. than mercury, than porcelain fused to who knows what, than porcelain fused to gold, or to even gold crowns and gold inlays and onlays. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when that's all we had available for patients as restorative materials in their back teeth. And that's just not true mm -hmm. anymore. Right. No, now yeah. the composite dentistry is just phenomenal. It is. It's, a, it's a truly amazing. Um, I'm trying to think the other modalities that, you know, through, through uh, Huggins' training uh, and your training of me um, that's really changed is just uh, my new patient Patient experience. pool has changed. <laughs> patient pool in the, the whole new patient exam. It's... it's so much more complicated. These patients right. come in with a myriad of issues. Right. And you're you're part psychologist and and an investigator. You're, you're trying to <laughs> piece like the that. puzzle together. Right. And you need so much more time 
and energy. And these patients are very sick, a lot of them. Right. And they're, they're, they've been to a myriad of doctors. They're at their wit's end. They are. They've, they've already been to usually four or five other doctors. Then they were sent to a psychiatrist and told that it's all in their head. Yes. And I've always said, yes, uh, you're absolutely right. It yeah. is all in your head, except it's in this third of the head, mm -hmm. you know, what we call the mouth, and not, not this third. Yeah. And a big, big difference between the two. Right. You know? But you, you've had training in, in surgery and, and all of that. I mean, you, yes. just, you just fit into our office like a glove. I uh, mean, just it, zoom. You have a great team around you, and it's, it's, been, Wonderful. it's been a real blessing. That's great. So, so we uh, really enjoy it. I don't know about my team back home. I give them a couple of days off, and <laughs> they're worried if I'm ever going to come back. They're getting, are they but, getting lazy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, been, it's been great. Good. Uh, Very good. Okay, so let's talk about um, the, the actual removal of the fillings, okay? There are people that believe, there are patients, there are patients that believe that if they're recommended to a specific dentist, they must go to that dentist. Mm -hmm. When the truth is that there are very few dentists, especially in the United States, that aren't highly skilled dentists. I mean, most people really have good hands. Just to get out of dental school, to pass the boards, right, right. you have to have good hands. You have to have a tremendous amount of skill. Mm -hmm. So really, the, de the difference between, you know, what we, we, we would call a, a mercury-safe dentist and one that's not a mercury-safe dentist is really just somebody who understands the Huggins Protocol and knows what kind of rules to follow before they go in there and take that filling out. You agree with right. me on that? Yes. Very yes. good. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, um, first is, you know, the patient workup that we do. Right, patient workup. And then we have the, the compatibility report. Right. We want to make oh, sure. Oh, that's right. That's right. Know, we want to make sure we have the right materials that we're going to put into that patient's right. body that aren't going to harm Right. Them. Very yeah. often I'll ask a patient, well, you had your fillings taken out in such and such an office. So how did the doctor figure out what material to put in? And they just give me this blank right, look. Right. <laughs> what? I go, well, how? I'll ask the question again. How did the doctor figure out what filling to put in? Well, it's, it's easy enough to know how to take out something properly. How did he know what or she, how did she know what to put in your mouth? And they give me this blank deer in the road look mm -hmm. and say, well, um, I don't know. I think they just picked a material that they liked. And very often the patient is allergic to whatever it is that's in their mouth. So while they did, on the one hand, they did a good thing. They took their mm -hmm. mercury fillings out. But then they had something put in their mouth that they're right. also allergic to. And so while it may not kill them as quickly as mercury would, it certainly kills still them. still not going to let them get as better as, as they as would have as gotten. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, so, so that's so another that's thing that's part of the Huggins Protocol is doing a compatibility test ahead of time. You know, yeah. paying attention to, so, so far we've talked about supplementation, yes. looking at their blood chemistry and seeing where the patient really is at. Mm -hmm. Looking at their blood chemistry, looking at their supplementation, looking at their diet. That's a very big key. That's yes. a very big part of it, mm -hmm. uh, and seeing what kind of foods they eat. Um, and then, of course, you know, making a decision about how best to treat the patient. Like you said, there's a lot of psychology that goes mm -hmm. into this also. Yes. Um, you know, that particular woman that we had today, she was not happy about even the thought of having teeth oh. extracted. She was yes. not happy about it at all. So you're right. Sometimes we have to play the psychologist also and let them know that if something is abscessed and, and infected, you're really better off without it. Mm -hmm. You're better off. And that's, that's something else that also people are, are kind of, I, I don't want to use the word brainwashed, but they've heard it so often that it, it's important to save a tooth. You must save a tooth, save a tooth, save a tooth. But at what and, cost? Right. And that's what we were, as a dentist, that seems like an oxymoron, that we're telling people to have their teeth removed. Right. We've, we've worked so hard to save them in our profession, in our training. Right. Um, so that's, that's right. an interesting... Now, we, but we also know now, once it's dead, it's dead. It's dead. The tooth yeah. should come out. And what Absolutely. else to our body do we hang on to that's dead? Right. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Not Nothing. a single thing. So, but that, you know, and then we talk about the protocol of once the patient is in your 
chair. Right. You know, so once the patient's in the chair, then the mm -hmm. mercury fillings are removed with a rubber dam with a separate source of air or oxygen, oxygen. depending if the patient is sedated, it must be oxygen. If they're not sedated, it can be medical air. So they have to have their own air supply. They have to have suction behind the rubber dam, suction in front of the rubber dam. Yeah, you mentioned high speed, high speed yep. suction, water. Uh, we like to put sulfur cream on the outside mm -hmm. of the rubber dam also. So all of this is to protect the patient. Well, what kind of things do we do to protect us? What, do, what are you doing now that, to protect yourself that you didn't do well, I'm wearing, 30 years I ago? Wear a, we have Mind Safety Corporation that's right in my hometown. It ah. makes the masks that filter out the mercury vapor. Right. So you and wear a gas mask. Yes. And so do I. <laughs> and I'm all cover my head, my eyes. I have a, I'm all garbed up. Our patient is all covered. Right. Once we're done with the removal of the mercury, that all comes off. Right. And then we change it. That's great. For the, the uh, restoration. Right. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things also that I learned in the Huggins protocol, that is very important after the mercury filling is carved out, to go in with a slow drill. Oh, yes. There are a lot of dentists that just love to use the fast drill, and they cut up the whole tooth with just a high speed. And that high speed drill literally fries a little bit of the dentin. Mm -hmm. And if that fried dentin is not removed carefully with a slow drill and, and cleaned up very nicely, that tooth will just kind of continue frying. And um, that's why a lot of people will have, they say, well, I had my composites taken out, but then the teeth died one by one. And then when they say that, I, I know immediately. Ah, they were not trained by Dr. Huggins, and they don't use the slow hand piece as much as they should. So that's part of the Huggins protocol also, is to use a slow hand piece very, very carefully. Take out all of the amalgam, take out all of the decay with slow hand piece, and then yeah. wash the tooth out thoroughly, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Why don't you say a couple of words about ozone? You you're familiar with the I, that's, ozone therapy? I am. I, well, through your office, yes. Okay. So I, I that that's going to be my next um, side continuing education. I'd right. like to get learn about more ozone. I love that, ozone. So I can bring it into my own personal office back in Pittsburgh. Right. But um, that's a terrific yeah. adjunct. Well, when I when I was in dental school, they used to teach us to take a little pellet of hydrogen peroxide to wash the inside of the tooth. And, and, you know, I find that comical now when you think about the, the bacteria, the fungus, the virus, the yeast, the mold, that hydrogen peroxide doesn't touch, mm -hmm. but ozone does kill all of it. And so now, compared to what we used to do 30, 40 years ago, ozone is just so much better. Even flushing with the ozonated water? Yes, yeah, so much better. Wash the tooth wash. with ozone before putting in a composite filling. Mm -hmm. It really makes a big, big difference. It really helps the patients out a lot. Yes. So, so this has been all. great. I love yep. having you on our team. It's just wonderful. Well, thank you. I it love, really is. love being with you and looking forward to great. future helping patients Good. get healthier. So when you come mm -hmm. to Centers for Healing, you can be rest assured that the treatment that you're going to get is first going to do no harm. That we follow the Huggins protocol and it doesn't really matter if you get Dr. Derek or you get Dr. Blanche. Um, well, actually it does matter. I tend to sing more while I'm working <laughs> and tell very corny jokes. Do you tell corny jokes? I, I don't, but no, I can so dance and do a jump. Dance. You know. There we go. <laughs> you can dance. And so rest assured though that when you come to Centers for Healing, any of the doctors that treat you, they have all been trained by the Huggins protocol, either by Dr. Huggins or by myself, and that they will first have no harm done to themselves. This has been Thank great. You. Thank you, yeah, Derek. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much.